In this session, we'll look at how to modify the sunlight properties of a stereo panorama created from an InfraWorks model. Now I'm starting out here in InfraWorks. I'm going to hold my left mouse button down and I will orbit this model. As I do, take a look at the shadows on the ground. This gives us a pretty good representation of where the sun is in the sky. Now, if you're familiar with creating a stereo panorama, you know that we export the model from InfraWorks into Navisworks, and then from Navisworks, we push it to the cloud to create the rendering. Just for a second, I'm going to jump to my cloud-based render gallery, and right here, we can see the rendering that was created from the InfraWorks model. Take a look at the shadows here. You can see the sunlight is obviously coming from a different direction. That's because I'm using the default settings. Now, ordinarily, this probably wouldn't even be a problem. In this case, however, as I orbit around to the entrance, you can see that the sunlight is creating kind of an unattractive shadow here on my curb and gutter. Almost looks like I have a problem with the geometry. Fortunately, my geometry is just fine. It just happens to be the way the light is catching the different facets along the curb. So what I'd like to do is create a cloud-based rendering that has sunlight properties that are very similar to what I'm seeing in InfraWorks. Let me show you how we can do that. I'm going to jump back over to InfraWorks, and we'll start by identifying the time and day that's being used in this model. I'll do that by clicking the Presentation button, and then I'll choose Sun and Sky. And here in the Asset Card, we can see the time of day is 12.15 p.m., and the date is August 16th, 2017. I'm going to write both of these values down. I'll be leveraging them again in just a little bit. Let's close the Asset Card. Next, I'd like to identify a lat-long coordinate that represents the approximate location of this site on the globe. I can do that by clicking the Settings button, and then I'll come down and choose Model Properties. Right here, you can see that my current coordinate system is Illinois State Plain, NAD 3 East Zone, U.S. Foot. By selecting this coordinate system, it allows me to see my State Plain coordinates here in the lower left corner of the interface as I move my cursor around throughout the model. I'd like to see lat long coordinates. So to change that coordinate system, I can open this menu here on the far right, and I can choose that coordinate system from the shortcut. Now, if you haven't used the lat long 84 coordinate system recently, you can also get it by clicking this globe. And then from here, you can choose lat longs, and then you can come down and double click on LL84. Now that I've selected the coordinate system, I'm going to come down to the bottom of the screen. I apologize, this is outside our window. Let me click OK to accept that. When I do, we can now see the lat long coordinates here in the lower left of the screen. Knowing that, I'm going to hold my left mouse button down. We'll orbit this around such that I'm seeing approximately a top view. I'll roll the wheel backward to zoom out. I'll hold the right mouse button down to pan. And I'm going to hover right around the center here of the building. When I do, I can see that my latitude is 42.103071, and my longitude is 88.257287. Now that I've identified my coordinate, I'm going to put things back the way they were. Let's jump back over to Model Properties, and I'll change my UCS back to the State Plane Coordinate System. Once again, when I'm finished, I'll come down and click OK. Now let's export this model to FBX. I'm going to start by zooming out. I will then click the Export 3D Model button. Let's drag this dialog box down so it's a little easier to see. I'm going to create my export using a bounding box. I'll click once here in the upper left corner, and then I'll come down and double click in the lower right corner. Let's drag the dialog box up. Now that I've identified the area that I'd like to export, I'm going to choose where I'd like to save it. I'll do that by clicking this folder button. And I'm going to save this on my hard drive in a directory called FBX. We'll call this file Restaurant, and I'll click Save. Finally, when I do the export, I would like to export the textures and materials, and I'd like to merge objects with the same texture. To create the FBX, I'll click Export. Once the file's been exported, we'll jump over to Navisworks. Here in Navisworks, I'll click Open, and then I'll select that same FBX directory. I'll choose my FBX file, and I'll click Open. Once the FBX has been placed, I'm going to click the top hotspot on the View Cube to get a nice plan view. I will then come over to the Selection tree. I'll right-click on the model, and I'm going to come down and choose Units and Transform. And by default, when we export from InfraWorks, it comes out as centimeters. I'm going to set this to feet, and I'll click OK. Next, I'll position myself in the model where I'd like to be standing when I do the rendering. I'll do that by rolling the mouse wheel forward, and then I'll come over and click the Orbit button. I'll hold the left mouse button down, and I will orbit. 
hold the mouse button down to pan. Let me roll forward a little bit. And I'm just going to position myself a little bit closer to the model. There we go. That looks good. Now that I'm standing where I need to be, let's load the appropriate properties to control my sunlight conditions. I'll do that by going to the Render tab. I will then come down and in the System panel, I'll choose Autodesk Rendering. From here, we'll turn the sun on by clicking the Sun button. This takes us to the Environments tab on the palette. And then, because of my screen resolution, I'm just going to roll the mouse wheel down to scroll to the bottom. Under Sun Angle Calculator, I'll choose Geographical. I will then tell Navisworks where this site is located on the globe. I'll do that by clicking the Settings button next to Location. Here's where I can enter my latitude and longitude. If you remember, my latitude was 42.103071, and my longitude was 88.257287. I will then set the appropriate time zone for this area. I'm going to choose Central Time, U.S. and Canada, and I'll click OK. Now that I've identified the location on the globe, I will then set the same date and time. We'll set the date by clicking this calendar icon. I will back up to August. We'll choose the 16th. I'll open the time menu and I'll choose 12.15 p.m. When I'm finished, I can click the X to close the palette and I am now ready to create my rendering. I'll choose Render in Cloud. I'm going to render the current view. The output type will be Stereo Panorama. Render Quality, I'm going to choose Final. Exposure, I'll leave that set to Advanced. And then for Width, I'm going to bump this up to 2046 pixels. I will also say Email me when the rendering is complete and I'll choose Start Rendering. In a little while, when the rendering is complete, I will receive an email like the one we see on screen. From here, I can click the Sign In button to log into the cloud-based render gallery. I will then select View Project to open the latest rendering. And in the render, we can see that I now have a very similar sunlight condition as what I have in InfraWorks. A further bonus, I no longer have the unattractive shadowing on my curb and gutter. If I want, I can left-click and hold to orbit around and view the remainder of the model. Finally, if I want to view this on my mobile device, I can come up and click the Share button. I'll choose Share via Link. This provides me with a hyperlink and a QR code that I can use to share this rendering. By either tapping the link or scanning the QR code with my smartphone, I can view the rendering as a fully immersive 360-degree stereo panorama. So the next time you're creating a stereo panorama from an InfraWorks model, remember that you are not limited to the default sunlight options. By simply assigning a lat-long coordinate to your site, as well as a date and time, you can create a stereo panorama that simulates virtually any sunlight conditions. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.